What have you witnessed someone do that made you realize he she is really, really smart? My wife's grandfather. He's a retired electrical engineer with a dozen patents to his name, and a long list of recognitions I can't be bothered to remember or name. I always knew he was brilliant, but never realized just how, until one day last year we were visiting and he got a phone call. Keep in mind he's been retired for 20 years and is 86 years old. The phone call was from an electrical engineering firm from halfway across the globe asking if they could fly him out to a site and have him consult on the energy capture of a hydroelectric dam they were building. They'd run into a problem that none of them all electrical engineers could solve. They had consulted three of the top related university departments in the US on the issue, and the last one had referred them to him. 20 minutes on the phone, and he agreed to think about it. Two days later he had solved their issue and written the solution on a single 8x11 sheet of paper, which he scanned and emailed to the company. He said he took so long to write it up because he didn't want to have to fly all the way there at his age. His explanation was so clear I was able to understand and follow it with no relevant higher education. One time my drunk uncle was in jail and needed bail money, and being that my dad was the only one in the family with any real savings, they all looked to him to fork up 100% the cash. Having been asked, he realized this situation had two possible outcomes. 1. Pay for his bail and never get the money back. 2. Not pay for the bail and the whole family blame him for it. So, my dad decided to throw them a curveball. He told them that whatever the rest of the family raised for the bail, he'll not only match it, he'll offer double whatever they raised together. Nobody offered one cent. Blame averted. Poor drunkle. I had a teacher in high school that using both hands could write a sentence starting from the beginning and end simultaneously. He even split the middle word of the sentence. He also spoke around 5 languages. What the frick? I was playing the card game Egyptian Ratscree with some friends and then all of us noticed that one of our friends was slapping a bit too fast to be believed. It turns out he was counting all of our cards and had each of our decks memorized, which is just insane. Till it's not Egyptian rat screw. Older brother always was terrible at school. I can remember him straight up asking why he needed to graduate high school and then again in college. He then accepted a low level job after graduation in marketing that ultimately fell apart due to the company executives screwing up big time. During all of it he somehow was able to keep a small client and within 7 months of working was promoted to their executive marketing director making 6 figures. Now he has multiple clients on the side and is always scheming something up. Dude is as hard headed as they come but nonetheless a dang marketing genius. Blows my mind how far he has come. I was once in Chinatown and I saw this old Chinese guy with a bunch of groceries. He had tied the bags together by the handle and slung them over his shoulder. He looked ridiculous. The next week I was struggling with a lot of groceries and I remembered the old Chinese guy. Stopped on the sidewalk, tied all my bags together, and walked home like the unencumbered dork I became that day. Not a person, but my parents old dog. My mom would get bones from the butcher shop for their dog. They were long enough that the dog couldn't get all the marrow out of the center. The dog figured out that only my stepdad's truck was heavy enough to break them after experimenting with the other vehicles at the house. There was usually a bone in the same spot on the driveway every time I went home. Reminds me of crows dropping nuts on crosswalks. In high school I had a friend who we made fun of all the time for being dumb, but he would have the wackiest ideas that would somehow work. One time. Around Christmas of my sophomore year, a few of us decided to buy a 30 pack, and then later decided we didn't feel like drinking it that night. I couldn't keep it at my house, but one of my friend's parents was coming to pick all my buddies up. Nobody knew how they were going to get the 30 out of my house into one of their houses. Then my friend came up with a genius idea. He went upstairs in my house and wrapped the 30 in wrapping paper. He then proceeded to carry it right out to the car with our friend's mom waiting and say it was a gift for his girlfriend who he was going to be seeing later that night. I realized that not being great at school doesn't mean someone isn't. Ingenious. I knew two guys in undergraduate who would play mental chess. As they'd passed in the hall, one guy would say knight to queen 3 or whatever. The other guy would roll back his eyes for a second and then nod to acknowledge the move. Both guys then kept walking in opposite directions. 
Later that day, when they passed again, the second guy would declare his counter move. A game could last days and they never forgot where any of the pieces were. Each had a mental image of the board. Sure, they might have been faking but these guys were always first and second on the dean's honor list. Four or four years of my undergraduate, I knew them pretty well. I think the mental chess was legit. Most really good players can do this. Once someone becomes familiar enough with the game it becomes a lot easier to recognize patterns. Of course, intelligence is required advantageous to get good at chess. Sitting in a best friend's apartment on the east coast in the mid 1980s. He's working on some code on a prototype Unix workstation MIPS had given him. He runs his program, and it produces an answer, then runs it again and produces a different answer. Thinks about it for a minute and pronounces the CPU is broken. Right. The CPU is broken. Never heard that one before. Has it occurred to you that? Yes. It had occurred to him. Went through three or four scenarios. Then he pulled out the machine level debugger and started stepping through the code. Look. Right here. The flags weren't updated right in this instruction. Yeah. Whatever. Sends email. On the brand new internet. To MIPS. Gets a response the next day. Oh, you have that CPU. We have verified your issue. We will put a replacement in the mail promptly. His CPU was broken. 30 minutes from diagnosis to request to repair. Anybody who can explain highly complex things very simply. It takes an intelligent person to understand it. But it takes a brilliant person to grasp it so fully they can dumb it down to explain it to anybody. I think it was Feynman who tried to write an introductory textbook on some obscure topic and concluded that more research was needed, because he was unable to explain the topic simply enough. I was at my desk waiting to make a purchase over the phone, and I mentioned to a co-worker that I always have to pull my credit card out. I should have this number memorized by now. Another co-worker overheard that, and said, I know your visa number, and spit it right out. After I got off the phone I asked him WTF, and he said he heard me say it a couple weeks earlier. The numbers just stick with him that way. I already knew he was a bright guy, but that took it up a notch. I'd ask him very politely to not ruin your life. When you sit down in a meeting for work where you're trying to solve a big problem and someone can say, that's the wrong question. You need to be asking. People who can do that generally understand the bigger picture and all of the various variables and factors in play and how everything fits together. It's some next level action to watch the entire room go. Wow. We're looking at trees and that guy's looking at the forest. My responses are limited. You must ask the right question. Lazy people are the best at this. I witnessed a kindergartner who couldn't draw straight lines keep his pencil still and drag the paper around to draw a triangle. You'll never be as lazy as the person who named the fireplace. A kid in second grade already knew algebra. Everyone knew he was smart. For April Fool's Day that year, our teacher decided to be cute and give us a pop quiz so she went to the 8th grade class and asked for an algebra test. Made copies and handed them out to us. Some of the kids were freaking out and the teacher assured us that we already went over this. So, she left the room and some of the kids started crying. She came back in after a few minutes and said that it was just a joke, but she graded the tests anyways. The smart kid scored an 18 stroke 20. My stepfather used to teach me math that was several years beyond what I was learning in second grade. I'm an information sponge and he fed me brain anything that I asked for. One day my parents got a call from my teacher. The teacher told them that I was teaching my classmates 4th 5th grade math in my spare time at school and to make me knock it off. I never saw it myself because I was about 2 years old but when my older sister was around 4 years old she used to go grocery shopping with my mom. She, my sister, would keep a running tally for all the items in my mom's cart. As my mom took something off the shelf my sister would ask the price and then would add it to the total in her head. If my mom put something back she would subtract it. My sister was right every time when they got to check out. She's a doctor now. My sister also used to read the bedtime stories to my parents when she was around 2 years old. Goddamn genius. Meanwhile I'm the kid who ate Play-Doh. My dad had a business trip in Seattle that I tagged along on so I could see a soccer match and explore the city. He invited me to go to the research hospital with him one day and I agreed. 
They were working on testing some type of cardiovascular tool on a cadaver that they would stimulate blood flow into test. Seeing my dad who didn't go to college, barely graduated from high school, lived on welfare with a single mom, and who knocked up a teenage girl when he was a teenager himself perform surgery on a cadaver using a tool he invented that could potentially save thousands of lives blew my mind. He had hundreds of patents on devices. I got surgery 3 years ago and my shoulder surgeon used a tool he invented in the 90s. He's an incredibly smart and hard working man who got just the right amount of luck to get him where he is today. I like it when you meet someone whose English is imperfect, but you realize they are very intelligent and are able to explain their thoughts. I remember once meeting a Japanese archaeologist who wasn't the best English speaker, but when he explained his research to me it was absolutely fascinating. Go to plug my dad in here. Had some friends over and just to mess around we asked him the definition of random words in the dictionary. We opened it to the eyes and asked the definition of 10-12 letter. 3-4 syllable words. Not only did he nail all of them but most definitions were verbatim. When we got to the 10th word, he goes, the verb or the noun and we lost our crap. It was seriously ridiculous. We were freshmen in high school and could hardly pronounce the words we picked. Turns out he read the whole dictionary over the summer when he was 16 and bored. Guy is still the smartest person I've ever met. I'm not even a dad, but if I found out my son said this about me I'd probably cry. My older brother has really bad ADD and always did terrible in school. I never realized how smart he was until a few years ago. We were watching Jeopardy together and he knew most of the answers to the most obscure crap. I was blown away. I swear it was like the scene from Groundhog Day. When my dad just decided to add an addition to the house. Like he'd be out there 70 80 hours a week adding 3 extra floors to the house with running water up to the 3rd floor. He would rent excavators and large moving equipment and only like 3 or 4 times he would hire an extra hand. That was amazing. Lots of dads decide to do that. But it sounds like yours actually completed it. Which is absolutely amazing. Wife is smart. Like 6 languages fluently smart without breaking a sweat. Has never not done well in school. Always gets promoted etc etc. But, no one in my family saw this because she's an introvert and tries to keep herself dumb so people get her and like her. My family and I are smart. She's next level up. So, after we got engaged, family had get together. As in cousins, friends, lots of people. As usual, we played some group games. She was reluctant, but I pulled her aside and asked her to try and fit in. She obliged, but was annoyed with me. Started with Pictionary, she schooled the room, moved to a bunch of card games with a single deck, counted cards, knew everyone's decks etc. Quiz board game, knew all the answers. Over and over again, she was dominant to the point of silencing my family. It was unnerving even for me. A few weeks later when we visited her family, we don't play games with soon to be misses. Frogtush, she plays to decimate the competition. Oh. Found out my little brother, age 12, has a legit photographic memory. He's a big LOTR fan and knows an abnormal amount about the series. Whenever he answers questions about it he looks up and squints a bit. I asked him about it and it turns out that he is actually reading from the book in his head. He can even jump to random page numbers. He also knows a ridiculous amount of world history. I go to him when I need help with that. Sadly, he is adopted and we don't share the same genes. I'd like to be friends with your little brother. I'd take him to parties with me just for the lot of trivia so I don't have to pull out the complete guide to Middle Earth. Just kidding. I don't get invited to parties. Put hardly any time into studying and do better on an exam than me after I spend days studying. For those of you who are like this and didn't develop any study habits, I was in the same boat. I didn't have to study all through high school but once I got to college it bit me in the butt. Here's probably my favorite study tactic that got me out of that rut. You ever had a test where professors will let you bring one 8x11 sheet or even a nautical with anything you want to put on it, formulas, etc? Well, I found that even if I didn't study anything else, just taking the time to fill one of these out was very useful. Realistically, you will use about 5-10% of what's on the sheet during the test, but filling it out will make you navigate through your notes and or class material and make you really think about what's important to be there due to the limited space. 
While doing this, you are subconsciously learning the material. So, even if it's an open book or closed notes test, it is always useful to do something like this, or at least it was for me. I was a kid, but I wish I wasn't. By the time I got to university I had no idea how to properly study and my grades took a huge hit and never really recovered. Growing up your dad is always that nut, at least mine was. Always thought of him as a joker who liked to invent stuff around the house. Long story short, when I was around 12, he made a basic hydrogen engine. He was on track to making it practical for his van and was so stoked, claiming he would get up to 4-5 more miles to the gallon. He was able to make a small hydrogen cell and a housing for it and set it in his van. It was so complicated I can't even explain it properly. He got 3-4 more miles to the gallon so his prediction was pretty close. He was then stuck on how to get more out of it, make it cheaper, and you know, maybe pitch his idea to get it on the market. One day he was googling new ideas and came across an Aus Uni that basically did the same thing before him. IDK the details but it crushed him. He stopped working on it. Kinda stopped making stuff. A few years ago I was home visiting and was walking through his workshop and found the cell tucked away all dusty. It dawned on me then that I will never come close to being as smart and intuitive as my father. I told him before I left too. My old man cried. I cried. It was great. One of my best friends from high school was like a real life goodwill hunting story. We came from a small, blue collar town. His parents were relatively poor. He was pretty much unheard of and unpopular, but not nerdy or geeky, more so hung out with the druggies and rock band types, until he got to high school. He started becoming fascinated with math and physics. He would spend hours at the library just reading books upon books on the topics. Apparently he scored perfect or close to it on his AP exams in calculus and physics, as a sophomore in high school. Our physics teacher at the school immediately took him under his wing. And before his sophomore year was over, he was teaching college math classes. He went on to get his doctorate from an Ivy League school and of course is a professor now. But he is definitely the smartest person I know. We used to sit at coffee shops in high school and he would just start doodling long, complex math problems on his napkin. It was way beyond anything I could understand, and I had taken all the same AP type classes he did. Holy crap. I've always wondered how people just get good at that stuff. It's like they have a giant vault only for that. Kid I knew in high school bet his friends, who were in the class, that he could get a 5, top score, on the AP chemistry test even though he didn't take the class. He did. Someone who doesn't engage with overdramatic, argumentative people. How's the saying go? An idiot will bring you down to their level and win. Smart people just avoid it and know how and when to keep their mouth closed. Lawyer arguing in front of the Supreme Court. He cites something in a law book, stating it can be found on page 84, and one of the justices motions to a clerk to get the book. The justice receives the book and tells the lawyer that no such thing is found on page 84. The lawyer responds perhaps your honor's edition is incorrectly paginated. It was. My dad's friend Mitch. I've only met him a few times, but when I saw him a few months ago at my parents anniversary party he remembered my birthday. I thought it was just weird until he pointed around the room and told me everyone else's birthday too. It was surreal. My younger brother unfortunately has severe ADHD and other mental disorders. He was kicked out of a couple of schools and has extreme social anxiety. He gets really annoying and argumentative. But dang I have seen that boy observe something for a few minutes, be it a sport, a dance move, an equation, something tech related, an instrument, and execute to near perfection after maybe 3 tries. He sat down with my girlfriend to study algebra while he was in school and understood the whole chapter in few minutes, he just needed someone to motivate him. Use their native language in fun and original ways, like making conversations very colorful. Fun adjectives, nice metaphors, etc. Fire fighters of Reddit What's the dumbest person you had to save in a stupid situation? Dumbass tried to cross a raging river in zero degree weather about a 300 foot span on a snowmobile. He lived but didn't make the crossing and the machine was recovered days later. In Maine you are required to get your snowmobile out if you sink it in a lake. They don't want those things leaking and polluting. 
So every year you hear about some guy having to hire a diver and such. I once had a firefighter tell me he almost died in a house fire while going back into the house to look for the owner. A neighbor was concerned about why the firefighter was still in the residence so he asked another firefighter. This is about how the exchange went. Neighbor, why is that fireman still in the house? Firefighter, he's looking for the owner of the home. Neighbor, he is right over there with the video camera. Turns out the owner did not think it was important to alert the fire department he was out of the house. Instead, he was just taking video of the whole event. The fire started because the owner had tried to smother his barbecue cooker flame with leftover wood from the siding that had been installed on his home. The owner did not realize it would burn. Burned his whole house down. Holy frick people are stupid. I'm not a firefighter, but I used to do a lot of disaster response work. Hurricane Floyd, Eastern NC. I had a farmer with a large family that refused to evacuate his house. Stubborn bastard. River had broke loose. Floodwaters were coming up fast, and the police had given up on changing his mind. I drove my truck right up into his yard, rolled down the window and asked him to dress his kids in something orange or bright yellow. He asked me why and I said so body recovery will be able to distinguish them from all the dead pigs floating around. He told me to frick off. But 5 minutes later he had the whole family in the vehicle and they got the heck out. The local news station was just reminiscing on how much Floyd had fricked up Eastern Carolina. Glad those guys didn't end up as statistics. We needed to close the main connection through a forest over the winter because the trees were falling faster on the road than we could remove them due to way too much snow falling. Also the redirection was more than an hour longer due to the snow. Some cars thought that they would come through but turned around as soon as they saw the trees on the road. One semi also thought he'd get through. He drove up to the trees and called the fire brigade and complained why we didn't remove the trees. As he was calling a bunch of trees behind him also fell locking him in. It stood there one month before the trees and the snow could get removed by us that at least the semi can back out. We needed another month until the road was free again. Former firefighter EMT. Easily the dumbest person I encountered was a mother of four who decided it would be an awesome idea to get a Facebook Instagram worthy picture of her kids, all under age 10, sitting in a rowboat. Mother untidied from the dock and thought she'd just pull them back with the rope. That she forgot to hold on to. They floated a half mile down the river before the two oldest boys managed to grab a branch hanging over the bank. It was really surreal to see four young kids, all in matching clothing sitting in a boat waiting to be rescued. I have no clue what happened after, but they were physically fine, just scared, a little tired but the mom was in full blown panic mode and kept getting in our way. I hope she's making better choices now. Years ago we had this call straight out of Caddy Shack. Some guy had gotten tired of this gopher ruining his yard. Little did he know though he was facing the sun tzu of gophers. The homeowner, dwelling upon his experience from Vietnam, decided that the best way to deal with the gopher was to treat the situation like a VC tunnel. In lieu of a frag grenade he poured a 5 gallon can of gasoline down the gopher hole, waited with a varmint gun, and lit it off. The ensuing explosion caused a small crater to form in his yard. I am still thoroughly impressed that there was a proper fuel to air ratio in the network of tunnels that allowed for such an explosion to happen. However the gopher refused to surrender without a fight. The gopher ran out of the hole engulfed in flames, causing the guy's yard to catch on fire. The gopher sprinted into the guy's shed still on fire and burrowed into a void space in the wall, where he died. Like the martyr perk from modern warfare his still flaming remains set the inside of the wall on fire as well as several flammables. In the end the guy's backyard was ruined and about a quarter of his shed burned down taking out a bunch of power tools and a zero turn mower. He definitely would have saved a few thousand dollars if he had hired an exterminator. This reminds me of my dad. He hated fire ants. Always had gasoline around to clean the grease you know. Well he would get bit by an ant and the fight was on. Gasoline fetched and poured onto the mound, promptly lit and the ensuing commentary delivered. Deepen. I'll show them it's fire. I'm not a firefighter, but my brother's wife at the time was. There was this massive structure fire at a barn in town that drew out nearly every truck in the general area, like three towns worth of firefighters trying to get this thing under control. During all of this, there was some lady who continuously called 9. 1. 
one asking over and over again what's going on at the farm up the road according to her. This woman would have to be a complete moron to not realize what was going on as the fire could be seen for miles. Fast forward later into the night and one of the ambulances on scene suddenly leaves. Obviously not normal for this sort of situation, but there isn't much time to question it. Fast forward still and as things are finally starting to calm down and are under control, one of the volunteers on the original ambulance comes over in his own car and shuffles sheepishly over to her and the chief of their department. He tells them that there is a woman a little ways down the road who called the ambulance, hence why they left, and requires a lift assist, but absolutely refuses to let the EMTs do it. No no, it has to be a firefighter. My brother's wife seeing that the other departments have things under control, goes with the man to see what's up. Apparently, it was the same woman who had called 9, 1, 1 over and over again and when they arrive, she is laying on the floor absolutely wailing. EMT say they can't find anything wrong from what they've been able to do, but with her requested firefighter they are finally able to get this woman up. They start asking her what happened, hoping she might be more willing to share with my brother's wife there and she says, I was just feeling a little ignored. I figured this would get your attention. Grown woman just laid herself on the floor, called for help, insisted on a firefighter when there was no need, all because the barn fire was getting way more attention than she was in the 9 one operators wouldn't give her the gossip about what was going on. I know she got in major trouble for abusing 9. 1. 1. But from what I hear from the people on both fire and ambulance, she has made a habit of calling for help whenever she feels she's not getting enough attention. She sounds like the type of woman who would fake a seizure in public. Actually, no. She sounds like the type of woman who would fake a seizure in public because someone else was in the process of actually seizing and she was jealous of the attention. Two I can recall. One specific. The specific one was a young girl around teenage years who decided those toddler swings with the seat you stick their legs through like a little basket so they can't fall out was made for a teenage girl. She got stuck and lost blood flow to her legs. We had to cut her down and get her to a hospital to have it safely removed due to it basically becoming a tourniquet on both her legs. The other is general, but it's people who didn't wear a seatbelt and the people they killed as a result. You have less control of a vehicle when you're not being held in place so those wrecks are more common as the first sign of trouble your butt moves in the seat and reduces your ability to control the vehicle. You also become a projectile. If you're lucky you only kill yourself. If you're not you wind up bouncing around and killing a passenger. Also the leading cause of partial ejections and re-entry to vehicles since nothing was holding them to the seats. So many times I could have just been there cutting someone out of a seat and them being barely beat up but instead they had been scalped and died or hit their kid or spouse or other family member or friend and killed them. One in particular I remember was a large man not wearing a seatbelt in an overturned truck. He woke up while we were working on him cutting the passenger side up to get down to him as the vehicle was on its side driver side down. He kept asking us how his son was. At first we didn't get it. Then we realized he was laying on his 15-16 year old son and due to the man's size we didn't see him. The son was wearing a seatbelt but he died because his father smashed into him and smothered him to death while we worked rather than just wear a seatbelt extender so his seatbelt fit. Also don't lie to us about if you wore it. Your seatbelt won't fire the pretension as if they are not engaged in the slot. They are designed that way. There is a circuit that is completed by the best being clicked in place which is also how your car knows your passengers are wearing a seatbelt or not and sets off that obnoxious alarm. There is also a sensor in the passenger front seat of most modern vehicles to detect the weight of a small person which is why your sodas or pizzas at whatever set off the alarm. Just wear the dang seatbelt and don't lie. If you were wearing it I won't be able to pull tons of slack on it when I arrive. Guess what goes in the report as the determining factor your insurance sees as to if you should have your medical covered as a result of an accident? Yup, I don't know what they do with the information but I have to write it in the report. Source. State vehicle rescue technician and firefighter. Mostly volunteer at this point. There was a horrifying but effective seatbelt advert when I was a kid. 90s England that basically went today Joe killed his mum. Then sat back down. With the kid sitting in the back and belted and smashing into the driver's seat. He turned me into one of those kids who would nag everyone about their seatbelts. But I've been in a couple of crashes since and walked away. 
it wasn't really his fault, but we had an old guy in a nursing home get his balls stuck in a shower chair. A motorist had a bad alternator and the car died while she he was driving. The electric lock control stopped working. We were dispatched for a person trapped in a motor vehicle. On arrival, the advice was given to manually lift the lock knob. You can easily tell the ones who will not survive the first 24 hours of the zombie apocalypse. Firefighter paramedic in suburb of PHX had to transport a guide to the ear because he was constipated. His wife tried to dig it out with a wooden spoon. Spoon got stuck and hurt to move it. Walked in and there's a 250 pound man, butt naked, lying on his side with a huge wooden spoon stuck halfway up his butt. That is, not why he had a spoon up his butt. Me and my dad are both firefighters and he said one time they went to a house because an elderly man could not get out of the leather recliner because he had been sitting in it for a week straight and his wife would just serve him drinks food and the guy never got up. He would just get drunk and urinate defecate himself until he was physically stuck to the chair and they had to cut him out. Two bikini clad girls had to be rescued from a swift moving river in a canoe. Neither girl brought a life vest or a paddle. Something something crap creek. Had a drunk guy in Antarctica chase a penguin. Penguin stuck his beak through the offending drunk guy's calf. He got sent home. And a report on international treaty breach wound up on some congress member's desk. Oh McMurdo. How I miss thee. Wow penogens are powerful. Dude picked up a metal ring from a hardware store in lieu of paying for an actual dong ring. It got stuck. He went to the hospital. The hospital called the fire department because a Dremel tool turned out to be the right tool for the job. You guys sure Dremel near the bait and tackle a lot. I use mine for small wood projects. Just ask this question of a firefighter friend. He saved a guy who was siphoning gas out of someone's car by sucking gas towards his mouth to start the siphon. The would-be thief was also smoking while doing it. Burns happened. Had a fellow who was running from the police. He decided to climb on board a chunk of ice that was flowing down the river. I am sure he thought he was a genius at the time, but the issue is that there isn't really a whole lot north of our town for a few hundred miles, so his long term planning wasn't great. Eventually we found him hiding in a small icy overhang on the side of the river suffering from hypothermia. After a brief stay in hospital he ended up being arrested. I was a volunteer firefighter many years back. One summer, after a long period of no rain, two good old boys decide to have a few dozen beers and take their jeep into a nearby field to go off-roading. Well, two featuring tall corn stalks that are bone dry wind up getting jammed up into the undercarriage, which, on a 90 plus degree day, turns out to be hot enough to ignite a fire. The owner of the field sees the situation unfolding from their house and calls for fire and police. Given the proximity to my location, I go directly to the scene after hearing the page go out and see these two buttholes trying to drive the jeep faster and faster to put the fire out. Eventually, the engine gives out, but they won't leave the car. I physically had to reach in, burning my arms in the process, since I didn't respond to the station first to get my turnout gear, and pull them out. Somehow, they decided that remaining in the car would slow down the flames. And because they thought it was a good idea to continue driving a burning vehicle around a dry field, we now have a significant brush fire and have to call mutual aid from another county to help douse the fire. State police get involved, I have a nice trip to the hospital, and buttholes lose their jeep and the remainder of their booze. Former fire and rescue firefighter here have helped release several dogs and children stuck in the mechanism part of a recliner chair. Also a bird stuck in a tree. Go figure. I remember asking a firefighter about this once, and he said a guy who was fricking a woman. Her husband came home, so he jumped out the second story window buck naked and impaled himself through the upper leg on a fence paling. It was one of those fleur de lis ones so it fricked up his leg pretty badly. They had to cut the paling out of the fence and load him into an ambulance. I honestly thought this story would end with someone getting their dangler stuck in something but that's worse. That's much worse. Obligatory not a fireman but they were most definitely involved. I used to work in a Nick public grammar school over the summers to pay for college back in the 90s. One of the full time employees was a nice guy but stupid. And I don't mean he was slow or anything. He just did dumb crap because he was careless. 
One time he loaded up a trailer with like 25 gallons of gas and was driving it back through the main school parking lot. He didn't realize that container cracked open and spilled all 25 gallons in the parking lot. He didn't want to get in trouble so he thought the best way to get rid of the evidence was to set the gas on fire. He didn't realize that burning gas gives off a lot of black smoke and a gigantic cloud of black smoke coming from a school generally attracts a lot of attention from first responders. Panicking. He tries to put the flaming lake of gas out by driving over IT with his car. The fire department gets there, screaming at him to stop driving his car through flaming gasoline. They finally get the fire out and just screamed at this guy for like 25 minutes. It was the funniest thing I've ever seen. I was the dumb call. My cat got her paw stuck under the dishwasher and was screaming bloody murder. I couldn't move her paw and I couldn't lift the machine. So I sat with her while my husband called the fire department. She chewed right through one of my favorite blankets in her stress. Firefighters arrive, not in full suits but heavy boots and pants. Soon as they came around the corner to the kitchen our cat miraculously was able to free her paw and take off to hide in the bathroom. The guys seemed confused, but at least it was easy. We thanked them profusely for being scary enough to free our cat, who had zero physical damage. Not even a broken claw. I guess she'd hooked her claws on something and didn't want to let it go for love or money. Not me but dad was a firefighter in Nick and once responded to a call at a Chinese food restaurant where the owner's walkway was iced over. He apparently didn't speak very good English and maybe misunderstood the job of a fireman. Genuinely don't know. They salted down his front walkway for him and explained that this was 100% not their job. They all had a good laugh and the guy gave them all free egg rolls. PPL always used to ask him questions about crazy calls and he never enjoyed talking about that so he would always tell that story. What happened in 1999 still makes me laugh to this day 20 years later. ETA, if you plan on commenting something along the lines of 20 years ago, ZOMG, I'm old. Screw you for reminding me I assure you roughly 40 other people have already beaten you to the punch. I get it. 99 doesn't feel that long ago. Let's all move on lol. It's interesting that that's what so many people took away from this story. Heard this story from a friend. Emergency call comes in for a miscellaneous electrical hazard. Chief walks in and a woman tells him that the TV in the bedroom is making a weird noise. It's turned off but there's a low buzzing sound coming from the area. Chief unplugs the TV, which she didn't think to do, and the noise doesn't stop. The TV is sitting on top of a chest of drawers so he opens up the top drawer and finds this woman's cell up just buzzing away. Super awkward. Obligatory not a firefighter but recently in San Diego a group of suburban moms decided to take their infants up the local hiking spot called Cows Mountain. It's not a particularly grueling hike as many children and elderly people can do it. However there is a heat stroke warning posted at the trailhead. Not to mention it can get pretty hot here and this last week was no exception with temperatures exceeding 90 degrees. Well these idiots took their infants up in this heat. The trail is pretty exposed and due to its easy accessibility and Instagram worthiness lots of inexperienced hikers flock to it. Many times with little to no water because they underestimated how hot and difficult it could be. Needless to say the fire department M's and Chopper were all called as these moms had taken their babies up and were too tired and exhausted to come down. They had to go up and give water, check their conditions and some even carried the babies down. I know fires are a lot hotter but I bet they were cursing out these moms in their heads as they had to hike up the mountain in pretty much full gear. The moms came strolling down laughing and flipping off the cameras as they were angry people were going to see their stupidity. This happened all because they wanted to take a group photo with their infants on a mountain on a hot day. I was on a backpacking trip through some national parks a couple years ago and we were repeatedly shocked by how little water most people were carrying. But like you're in the middle of the freaking desert and we'd see people with no pack just holding a 20 ounce bottle of water. Meanwhile I've got 3L in my pack and an extra 750 milliliters bottle just in case. Fire department and the paramedics had to come to my work one day because some kid didn't know the difference between a swimming pool and a splash pad. There's this artificial waterfall that goes down into a basin that's only about 2 inches deep where there's fountains and stuff for kids to play in. This kid decided to climb up the waterfall. There are multiple signs posted not to do this. And decided to dive off into the water below that again is only 2 inches deep. 
Luckily the kid landed flat on his face so he survived and avoided being paralyzed but he was knocked out cold immediately and would have probably drowned but luckily his mother heard the splat and came running over screaming and pulled him out. And for my next trick, I shall dive from the roof onto this damp sponge. Not a firefighter. This happened to my son when he was 6. He was at a cub scout meeting which was next door to the fire station. The firefighters had these racks where they'd lay their hoses out to dry, I think. The little scouts were climbing on those racks one day and my son's chubby leg slipped between the bars and got stuck. The firefighters had to come use the jaws of life on their own dang racks to free my kid. What is the stupidest thing you have seen an otherwise smart person do? I once knew a guy who actually only ever made very smart decisions. He even used Dashlane just like you should. Dashlane can be your one stop shop for your digital identity by managing all of your passwords so you don't have to keep track of all of them. They also keep your personal info and financial secure making your digital life safe. Dashlane works across all platforms including all Apple products, PCS, Android, Safari and Chrome. Dashlane also has a secure autofill feature that works for personal information and credit cards saving you time when shopping online, a VPN to prevent prying eyes from tracking what you're doing and so, so much more. My favorite feature that Dashlane offers is complex password generation. It's always hard for me to make and remember complex passwords but Dashlane makes it so easy to be secure. Go to Dashlane.com updo to get Dashlane for free on your first device. Whoa, I'm suddenly wanting to go to Dashlane.com updoot and use promo code updoot to get 10% off Dashlane Premium. Mine was the stupidest thing I have done. It was pretty embarrassing. I was leaving my flat and I was talking to a girl in my uni course. As I got to the door to exit the building I noticed someone outside and was going to let them come inside before I left. After about 6 or 7 seconds of me just standing there the girl asked me what was up and I told her that the person outside must have been having trouble getting inside. She then pointed out that it was my reflection. Look at the bright side. It was probably equally embarrassing for the other guy. Once I got a call from one of my college professors, one of the smartest and friendliest person I know. Prof, can you pick me up at this address? 30 miles from his place without public transport? Me. Sure. How did you end up there? Prof, I went to sell my car to this guy. LMAO. This is my favorite. I can totally see how this happened. My boss and I were chatting on the phone about some random work issue. He told me to call so and so for some reason. I told him I needed the number. He said, hold on. I gotta look up the number on my phone. Shuffle sounds. Crap where's my phone dang. Twerved it. My phone must have fallen out of my pocket. Sonofa. Well, gonna have to call you back once I find it. I cracked up until he jokingly yelled don't you tell anyone about this. Only heard about it, but it's fantastic. I joined Mensa for the card. When I went to Kinko's to laminate it, I didn't read the instructions on the wall, and the laminate melted to the machine. I had to get the Kinko's guy to open the machine for me, but by then the card was bubbling. When he scraped it out and saw what it was, he laughed. He laughed so hard. Thought there was 60 cents in a dollar. Took him a solid couple minutes to figure out that there wasn't after we just sat there laughing at him. Comma thought there was 60 seconds in a dollar. Took him a solid couple dollars to figure out that there wasn't. My wife, the smartest person I know, looked in the sky at about 3pm and asked me why the sun was so dim. She was looking at the moon. Please tell me you leaned over and in a Scottish accent said no donkey, that's the moon. Was at law school with a smart guy, we shared a house. He wouldn't heat anything up in the microwave if it hadn't been bought as a microwavable product. He was convinced that it would get pumped with radiation and he'd be eating radioactive food. If I was that dumb I probably would have done it to become the Hulk. My grandfather is a chemical engineer that used to work for Dow Handling startup of some of their biggest plants. He went on to be an expert in industrial cleanup operations. He's a practical genius. He also decided it was perfectly acceptable to put stuffing into a plastic bowl and slide it into a 400 degree oven. I once put a pizza in the oven on the wooden plate I was going to use to serve it after, so I'm not going to judge him. We still ate the pizza, but I definitely had a strange taste. 
I once tried opening a thing of Pillsbury biscuits with a can opener a few years ago. My mother took my picture with it to use it against me in the future. I had a college professor insist that afternoon started at 11am, because that's when he had lunch. I have no idea how you could get that wrong. Afternoon starts afternoon. It's in the dang word. Fun thing about college faculty. They are generally very, very knowledgeable about one thing only, and actually pretty stupid about a lot of other things. That's what you get for spending 10 years devoted to the study of something, usually somewhat obscure, to the point where you are probably the world authority on it. One time, my friends and I were walking around downtown and we were passing through a parking lot. One of my friends noticed this and asked, is this a car dealership? No, this is a parking lot. So naturally he responded with, but why are there cars here? Took a few minutes of explaining for him to remember that cars do tend to be in parking lots. This one is so bad that reading it got me stupid. My boyfriend, we did those 90 second microwavable rice packets and I smelled something burning. I asked how long did you put the rice in for he said, 3 minutes. I told him, it was only supposed to be 90 seconds, and he looked at me like I was stupid and told me ugh yeah, that's 90 seconds, then a few seconds later he turned bright red, still make fun of him for it. If you makes him feel better, I did something similar, I put one in and forgot to make a tear in the top for a vent, at about 75 seconds in, I hear a pop, that sucked to clean up. Oh boy I finally have a story for this one. One of my mom's best friends growing up has a brother who was absolutely brilliant. This is a guy who graduated top of his class, got a perfect score on the SAT, and went to and graduated from Harvard. Some time into his adult life, he decided to go to the grocery store a few blocks away. Ordinarily he walks, but he decided to drive this one particular time. He went to the store, got his stuff, and proceeded to walk home. The next morning, he went to get into his car, only to discover that it was missing from his driveway, so he filed a police report. A few days went by, and he had to go to the grocery store again. He walked like he normally does, and found his car exactly where he left it a few days before. This is a Harvard graduate. I did this. First time driving to school alone, I rode the bus home. My doctor, resident at top university hospital, wife constantly misuses the words door and window interchangeably, it's a riot, please close the door, where are you going the door oh crap, I meant the window, this is practically daily, weirdest, most confusing issue anyone could ever have, like confusing floor and ceiling, or cat and rabbit. A girl I knew in high school needed a piece of paper, so she turned on the computer and printed one out. She probably felt smart as heck doing it too. Working at IT support. Woman with a PhD in virology calls up. Her keys keep sticking. Do the standard troubleshooting but couldn't fix it. So I went to her desk. What was the cause of the keys sticking? While well, Miss PhD was eating a whole pineapple over her keyboard. About 5 years ago. I got one of those motion activated air fresheners and put it on my dresser. It wasn't until I got up the next morning that I discovered it was lined up directly at eye level where I got out of bed. I effectively booby trapped my room against myself. Very confident I see. My sister in law is a molecular biologist. Her level of genius is astounding. She put herself through school via scholarships but made pocket money working at Ponderosa. One day she was changing the oil in the fryer, set the old, hot grease tub on the floor and proceeded to step in it. She literally cooked her foot. It took several skin grafts, but mostly looks normal now. So whenever someone does something stupid in our family, we say they cooked their foot. Oh cringe. That is a seriously big deal. Professors with all kinds of degrees who've written renowned books papers can't figure out how to make a video play on the projector instead of the monitor. My father told me a story about his father. My grandfather was a brilliant chemical engineer working for Procter & Gamble. He actually led the team that figured out how to make liquid tide. One day he came home, scooped himself some ice cream, put chocolate chips on top, and put it in the microwave. He was surprised that the ice cream melted rather than the chocolate. I stuck my hand in a pot of boiling water. My brain just stopped working for that second apparently. I took a frying pan out of the oven without a mitt. We should start our own cooking show. 
Friend is standing in line at Target and has a 9V battery and a penny in his pocket. The two make contact and naturally the penny gets hot. He pulls the 9V out of his pocket and looks at it as if he has never seen this object before. He sticks his tongue on it, shocks himself, pulls it away, looks at it, does it again, pulls it away, looks at it and does it a third time. The cashier just stared at him like someone let a monkey out of the zoo. A lot of smart people I know are just terrible with money. I know people with 4.0 GPAs and high paying jobs that are borderline bankrupt because they spend every dollar they have trying to keep up with the high rollers who run their company. Like these are smart people, but incredibly insecure as well. And that's just a terrible combination. I made peanut butter cookies last night and I forgot to put in all of the dry ingredients. So, you made peanut butter soup. My best friend has a genius level IQ. He was in the top 10 of my graduating class and has nearly a 4.0 GPA studying chemical engineering. I once saw him look right down the barrel of a loaded shotgun. I did this with a champagne bottle I was trying to open. The cork popped, bounced off my forehead and then ricocheted off the ceiling. I had a round welt on my forehead for a day or two. I am not a genius. My old lady of 7 years just finished up her masters in accounting. She roasted a chicken yesterday and as the timer rang I yelled to her remember to use a hot pad to take the lid off the roaster pan. Because like the pan the lid handle is hot. I get a sarcastic no dub back from her. I watch from a mirror with a good angle of her. As she takes the pan out with two hot pads on the side handles of the pan. She then sets the pan on the stove top. Puts the hot pads back in the drawer, then grabs the handle on the lid of the pan. She burned her hand again, dropped the lid to the floor loudly, and then ran to the living room to see if I was laughing. I was. Dumbest smart person I know. I love her. I was going to bake cookies for my 20th year high school reunion, but I encountered a problem. I explained this problem to my fiancé, me. I was going to make cookies for my reunion. But it ended up I couldn't. Tim. Why? Me. Well, your mom gave me that box of cookie cutters that has over 100 cookie cutters and I was going to make cookies in the 9 and 5 shape for the class of 1995. But it didn't come with the number 9. It has 1 through 8. But number 9. At this point he just stared at me. Because he thought I had come to a realization on my own. Which I didn't. Me. What? Him. You just have to turn the number 6 upside down and it's a 9. Me. Blank look. Him. The number 6 upside down is the number 9. You did realize that didn't you? He cracked up when he figured out that I never realized this. I have a PhD. That's okay. My mom is a programmer for Boeing and she complained that her heated blanket was still too hot. Turns out that the number 7 looks like an L upside down and she thought it was on low. Well she married me, but I forgive her. I have a relative, cousin of my aunt what's that, who has a doctorate in engineer and made a ton of money in petroleum engineering, yet over the years has sent a large fraction of it to Nigerian scammers. Even more interestingly, he started doing this before the internet when they just sent snail mail letters to people, and has sent it to the same Nigerian family over the decades his way to support Africa, I guess. But then this man also doesn't believe we landed on the moon or that the holocaust happened, so there's that. A girl I went to high school with went to the same university as me. She was top 5 in our graduating class and hasn't gotten lower than a 3.8 in 2 years of college, including biochemistry and organic chemistry. One summer day we were out at a bonfire and she had a hood on because, and I quote, don't moon rays make you paler? My grandfather has a PhD in computer science, one of the early ones. He was on the team that developed the fingerprint computer that ended the days of using a magnifying glass to match prints. The original computer now lives at the Smithsonian. It was snowing out and he said he was grilling steaks. I thought he was on the outside porch. I looked outside and he was not there. I found him in the basement using a huge gas grill. It took me several minutes to explain to him why this was not a good idea. My friend turned 21 day, and we were talking about his birthday. I proceeded to comment wow, you've been a teenager for 20 years, yeah my friends don't let me live that one down. Told my sister, who was turning 25, that she was halfway to 30. 
spend an incredible amount of time and effort nervously trying to figure out why an almost new and very expensive oscilloscope wouldn't turn on. Reason. Someone had toggled the switch on one of the built-in power strips on the lab bench to off. I did this two years ago. The scale of the amplitude was set in a way that prevented us from seeing any output. Took us about a week to figure it out. We were getting ready for dinner one night and we're kind of in a rush to get it done. Whatever ever we were making, it required bread. Well, the only bread we had was frozen at the time so we had to quickly defrost it. So my mother randomly yelled for my oldest brother, who happens to be the smartest out of all of us, to go get it from the freezer and bring it to the kitchen. He delivered the frozen bread to the kitchen and our mom had her hands full so she told him take the bread tie off and put it in the microwave. So, he takes the tie off and puts it in the microwave and set it to defrost. Not even 30 seconds later he starts saying uh, mom, the bread tie's on fire. Turns out my brother thought it meant bread tie and not the frozen loaf of bread. My friend Kevin, went to Caltech, works for JPL. He's an actual rocket scientist, literally one of the smartest people I can think of. When we were in our early 20s, he had to take his brand new Honda Civic back to the dealership after two weeks of ownership because he filled it with diesel. Afterwards, I asked him, isn't the diesel nozzle incompatible with standard gas tanks? His response, it's not. It wasn't easy, but I made it work. My friend is a geneticist, smart guy all around. A few months ago he spent 10 minutes trying to push open the door in his kitchen and eventually his hand went through it and he gashed his arm and ended up getting a bunch of stitches. If he had pulled the door instead it would have opened. I travel a lot for work and am going to London later this month. One of my girlfriend's best friends is an Iku nurse, saving the lives of premature babies every day, and has forgotten more about biology and anatomy than I've ever known. She asked what language they speak in London and if I was going to visit the Eiffel Tower if I got some free time. This one is about me. I'm a senior in engineering being paid to do some fancy research that we hope will easily eradicate third world diseases. My dad has always managed my finances and never really taught me much. I just got a credit card and had a $500 limit. Spent $492 in a month and got confused when during the next calendar month after the statement, my credit card was still being declined. I thought the limit reset every month regardless of if you paid your balance. It just made sense to me. When I called my dad asking why my credit card hadn't reset yet he laughed at me for a solid hour and told all his business partners. I laughed it off as being an engineer not a finance person like him but my lack of real world experience with economics money is also sad. I'm a living case of why we should have useful life skills classes in high school. When I called my dad asking why my credit card hadn't reset yet he laughed at me for a solid hour and told all his business partners. Haha <laughs> look how little I taught my son. This girl I was kinda seeing at the time asked me if I wanted to watch a movie. So we go up to her room. She pops in elf. And turns to me and asks wait. Can you watch this since you're Jewish she has a 4.0 GPA and is going to law school next year. Also. When I eventually told her I was a virgin, she asked me if I ever had a boner. I was 19. Not seen directly, but heard the professor tell these two stories. This man is an expert with nanomaterials and just an all-around physics champion. And yet, story 1, the professor begins watching karate movies, and becomes a fan. Soon he begins to wonder if he can reproduce some of the feats he has seen various martial artists perform on film. I am a physicist. He says, I can do this. So he gets a stack of a few cinder blocks and tries to break them with his fist. He shattered almost every bone in that hand. Story 2. Once, his home's water heater stopped heating water. I am a physicist. He says, I can do this. After all, he reasons, the water heater is just a really big resistor submerged in a tank of water with some plumbing attached to it all. Why not repair it himself? The basement cleanup cost him a few thousand dollars, plus the cost of a new water heater and professional installation. Reddit what is the dumbest question a customer or client has ever asked you at your job? Working in the back of an ambulance on a patient with a serious need of nitroglycerine to lower their blood pressure. Sir, before I give this medication to you, I need to triple check that you have not taken any ED drugs in the last 72 hours like Viagra or Silas. 
rattles off all variations. If you have taken it and I give you this nitroglycerin, your blood pressure could drop dangerously low. Have you taken any of these meds? Oh no, never. Are you certain? Oh yes, of course I am. Runs through potential deadly side effects again. No, never. Okay, hold this pill under your tongue. Does generic Viagra count? Gra. Why do you do this? Pharmacist here. I feel your pain. Why I sent them an invoice. Sigh. I work for an accounting firm. We did a project for them, wrapped it up, and billed it. A few months later, they came back with another project. So we did the work, and gave them a bill. They somehow thought that the new project was covered under the previous invoice. I get too many dumb questions to remember them all. Here's a dumb encounter that happened just yesterday. When sending confidential documentation, we would encrypt it and put a password on it. It's common practice to send the document and the password in two separate emails. I got a message from this guy saying he couldn't open the document I sent him. Me. Did you use the password? Client. Yes. It said there was an error. Me. What password did you use? Client. I just hit a K and it said that I had the wrong password. Me. Wait. So did you type anything in? Client. Well number. Me. Could you use the password that we provided you? Client. I didn't think it would work so I deleted the email. Me. I tried nothing and I'm all out of ideas. A group of 4 ladies sat on a table that is reserved for a group of regulars every day. Before I opened my mouth to let them know. One says we see a reserved sign but we are unsure exactly how reserved it is. Long time ago now. Got a call that a user's laptop was dead and wouldn't power on. I go and check it out. Press the button. No life. Plug it into the power. It starts charging. Press the button. It boots just fine. The user wasn't plugging the laptop into power because she thought we had wireless. Tried to diagnose someone's connection problem for 20 minutes before I overheard splashing and kids. Asked where they were and they were at a pool. They thought the office Wi-Fi extended to anywhere on the planet apparently. Mildly relevant. I used to work the counter in parts at Subaru and my manager was helping a customer. A rare occurrence for him. And he turned to me and asked me how many days do we have for a 45 day return? Selling paint. Woman wants to paint her fence. I give her advice and explain to her how to prepare the surface. She then asks. Do I need anything to apply the paint? I'm like a roller or a brush. She's like oh. I can just splash the paint on the fence. She was dead serious. Woman. This is not Looney Tunes. This is the real world. Vet tech. A lot of people think their dog's nipples are ticks. A lot. One man even pulled a but he's a boy on us. I used to work as a bank teller. A lady came up to me and asked to withdraw money. I informed her that she couldn't withdraw money because her account was overdrawn. She was immediately upset. So I had her account checked for fraud. She then explained that all those charges were hers and she wasn't expecting any payments. She was spending money she knew she didn't have. She then asked me why we couldn't just give her more money. This is my grandmother. She overdraws hundreds a month and couldn't understand why they wouldn't give her a loan. For my name. Not the question itself but the reason why he asked. I was volunteering as cashier at a used bookstore for the library. Not my regular job but I do it often. In comes this older fella who buys a big stack of books for like 10 bucks. He was really nice and chatty though he didn't seem completely aware mentally. Not a big deal. I just had to explain sales tax and the book pricing a couple times before he seemed to get it. He pays by credit card and I explain to him how to sign the touchscreen for the payment to go through. This is where he asks for my name. I tell him. He takes the iPad and says he really appreciated my service and happily tells me he's going to sign my name for the card so they will know to send the money to me. Before I can say no wait. He submitted the signature. I can't see his receipt but he keeps telling me I was great and to keep the change so I can't assume he was being legit. I honestly wouldn't call it dumb. Just bizarre. Made me wonder if he's been signing cashier names the entire time he's had a credit card. Thank goodness the card companies never check those things. 
Thank goodness the card companies never check those things. I remember reading this story about this guy, maybe it was a reddit comment, about this guy who consistently signed his receipts with a doodle of a dong. The first time he decided to be a grown up and signed his actual name, the bank contacted him because they were concerned about possible fraud. A co-worker at a video store asked does this calculator do math? No, unfortunately all it does is roll cigarettes. When I asked for here or to go I got a confused look followed by what would you recommend? Definitely to go. Can we open the curtains to make the screen brighter? While pointing at a projector and screen setup, she seriously thought that more light in the room would make everything brighter as if the projection was some sort of moving painting. I work in AV. I can confirm I've gotten this. Also I get this doesn't look like it does on my computer. Of course projecting light looks different than in LED display, especially when you rent the cheapest projector for the biggest screen size. I worked at Kinkus and on three separate occasions different people angrily asked me why I returned their fax documents to them. They thought that a fax machine was some kind of Willy Wonka thing that sent their original piece of paper to the recipient. A few years ago, far more recent than it should be, I had to send a document to the local council. They asked me to fax it, I asked if I could just scan and email it and they said no because we need the original. I used to work in a call center for a large bank and a customer phoned while he was in one of the branches and said the queue was too big so he wanted me to help him. I asked what his query was and he said the ATM was broke so he had to withdraw cash. I asked how I could possibly help him withdraw cash from the bank over the phone and he said why can't you just fax it to me? So apparently a lot of people out there think fax machines are the Star Trek transporter. C. How much is this? Me. 50 C. Like the sticker says. C. And this one? Me. One dollar. All the items have labels on them with how much they cost. C. Oh is that what those mean? That's clever. Not the slightest bit of sarcasm in their voice. I pressed slightly and found they were genuinely unaware of price labels. You met a time traveler. Renovating a major hospital when the owner changes their mind again and wants to change the plan after we've started construction. You guys can take care of that right, with no extra cost? Oh, and the end date won't change, will it? We sure as frick can't Steve, and it sure as frick will. Those changes are gonna cost another $100,000, and now we need to go buy completely different materials and figure out what the frick you're talking about. The schedule is frick now. This is why construction never ends on the first given end date. While towing his car to a dealership, so what do you do for a living? He was serious. He assumed I had another job because I didn't fit the Billy Bob persona he associated with tow truck drivers. I did this with a realtor that was showing me a few houses. I'm a realtor. That makes sense. I just got lost in the small talk and had a brain fart. Library. Once I checked out several books to a woman and told her the return date. She looked at her friend, then back at me, and said, Shocked, you mean I have to bring the books back? Similar but opposite. At a bookstore I worked at we changed our return policy from 1 month to 14 days and so many customers angrily shouted that they can't possibly finish a book that fast. We calmly told them that's the point. We aren't the library. When you buy a book it's to keep. I used to work in computer sales and repairs. Had a customer come up who was maybe 23 years old saying she couldn't get her laptop to open something. So I take it, and open it and casually ask, what is it you can't get open? She looks at me shocked as I open the laptop screen and tells, I have been trying for hours to get IT to open how do you do that? I look at her not knowing how to respond and close it and open it again. She takes it and walks out saying thank you. I took a long look at my computer I was working on and decided that this was the moment that made me quit that job. I work at an Italian restaurant and this guy was looking at ordering a salad, and when I asked what dressing he wanted he kept going back to the pasta sauces and asking Sugo, that would be good on it wouldn't it, I'll get that and I tried to explain sir, those are for the pastas, you got the Mediterranean salad and he responded you're right, maybe carbonara, another sauce. I don't get what he wasn't understanding. He seemed like a normal smart dude but he just couldn't comprehend the difference between the dressings and sauces. 
I work in pharma and someone called yelling at me to stop selling her son weed. I think she took the definition drug company way too literally. I worked at a Mongolian restaurant that served white rice. A guest honestly did not know what rice was when I offered him some. I had to explain it as those little white things. After 10 seconds of me trying to figure out if he was just messing with me, he looked at me still confused and I just said never mind. Someone once asked me why are you guys making it so difficult to find a car parking spot this time of year it was Christmas time, and I was a casual working in a tiny store in a huge shopping center. I didn't even know what to say. Because we hate you. Library clerk here. Do you have a phone book for celebrity phone numbers? No, sir. No we don't. I worked at Old Navy and an elderly lady walked in and asked where the boats were. She had never been inside an Old Navy and assumed it was some sort of boating store. Not a question, but someone once effectively told me they were allergic to air. I used to work in an optician's where we'd carry out pressure tests, a few puffs on air onto the surface of your eye, where quite literally, the machine just blows your eye with, yup, air. The customer was Adam and she was allergic to it, couldn't have it done and in fact accused me of no knowing what I was talking about. I see you met my grandma. This one was just 2 hours ago. One of my users came today with an iPad. When I asked what the problem was, she said that when she holds the power button and home button down for 10 seconds, it just shuts off and takes a minute to restart. That was her whole problem. That if she holds the power button, it turns off. She called it the freaking power button. I used to work at a fine jewelry kiosk in a mall. Our jewelry included items like gold bracelets and necklaces bonded with sterling silver, sterling silver rings with cubic zirconia gems, gold engagement rings with diamond chips clustered together rather than one large diamond, etc. I had a lot of regulars, and this one woman would come in often and ask of every item she was interested in, is this real I explained what bonded means and how we don't sell diamond rings for $25 but that the rings were indeed certified sterling silver with synthetic gems. I gave her information like this over and over again, day after day, and she would follow up every explanation with, okay, but, is it real? It's a real ring, yes. I used to work at a grocery store deli. My co-worker for some reason got more stupid questions than anyone else. We'd swap stories every shift. But one went a little like this. Hi, what can I get you? The 8 piece chicken. How many pieces are in it? How? How many pieces are in the 8 piece chicken? Um, there are 8 pieces in the 8 piece chicken. Okay, I'll have that, please. To be fair, the lady was awfully polite but how many pieces are in the 8 piece chicken is still a stupid question. Can I have chicken medium rare? No no you cannot. I once had the exact same thing happen. Girl, can I have the steak? Medium rare please. Guy, I would like the chicken. Medium rare as well please. Me, I can't do that sir. That's salmonella. Then she had to explain why you can't eat chicken medium rare. Whenever I answer the phone I have to say good morning afternoon and then our hotel name. So many people interrupt me halfway through this to ask if they called the correct hotel. Some even after I just said that. I work in a bank. Actually not even a bank. It's an advice center so no cash or anything like that. Not that anyone reads the signs on the way in. Had a pair of women come in and one says that the other is visiting from France and needs to check how much is in her account and can I tell her. I ask if she's a customer of this bank. Thinking maybe she's a student learning English and has set up an account because that's quite common. But no. She wanted me to tell her the balance in her French bank account. How do people go around having no idea what's going on? Work at a zoo. And one year they did a big TV advert to highlight night zoo since we are open until 9pm during summer. At around noon a woman asked me where was the night zoo. I said here but in 6 hours. Working as a flight attendant. London to Miami in business class. Mum with one toddler and one 5 year old boards immediately spots me and asks where is the crash i'd like to clarify my airline does not and has never offer child care on board she was adamant we should and continued to palm her children off on the crew for the rest of the flight luckily the kids were fairly quiet the crash is beside the swimming pool 
I won't get into my job but I am routinely asked what 80% or 85% of £100,000 is. I work at an independent pet store. We sell mostly dog supplies. But there's a small section of cat toys catnip etc. A new, pretty jimmicky item we brought in is a line of catnip that is packaged to look like medical weed. There are the prescription bottles and pre-rolled joints. Now, the people know these are catnip products. But I've had multiple people ask, after puzzling over the pack of raw paper rolled catnip joints, but, how does the cat smoke it or, how can they even hold the lighter? They've got paws. I never do quite know how to reply besides muddled laughter. I work in a poker room at the front counter. Him. Can we get a table? Me. Sure. What would you like to play? Him. No. For dinner. Me. Looking around. We don't serve food here. This is a poker room. Him. Grumbles and walks away. I worked at Wendy's through high school and part of college. One day, a man in his 50s wearing a bright magenta suit walked in and ordered a burger. I asked him do you want a combo, or just the sandwich and he asked what is a combo. I explained to him that it was a sandwich with fries and a drink, but somehow he didn't understand. He looked at me blankly and asked I want fries and a drink, but what is the combo. We went back and forth on this for like 5 minutes. I don't even remember if he ever got what a combo was, or if he ended up getting it. I do remember. However, that I saw him two weeks later in a different city at my other job training political canvassers. He was wearing the same magenta suit. I was in such shock that I just stared at him, saying nothing, thinking, it's the combo guy. Do you guys sell ice here? No sir, sorry about that. Alright yeah got anything like ice? Comma um, what? Got any UHH real cold water? Had a customer ask for a 100% lead crystal decanter. I had just explained to him what 20% lead crystal meant. No you can't get 100% lead cause it wouldn't be crystal and also it'll kill you. Worked at a small fine dining steakhouse in high school. The restaurant closed at 10pm. And one day a table decided to take their sweet time with everything. So it was now 12.30am. And I still had homework to finish in school the next day. One prick at the table asks man. I bet you really want us to get out of here don't you ya no crap. But I couldn't tell him I did. I told him well. While I have school in a 6 hours. Providing good service means treating every customer as if they're your first one of the night. Shot myself in the foot right there. They didn't leave until almost 2am. And I was late to school the next day. I'm surprised your manager let that slide. People don't believe that I'm a sushi delivery guy because I'm white. In high school a while back I worked at a Tim Hortons and we were advertising that we had just put in free Wi-Fi. Old guy at the drive through asked for a free Wi-Fi. We asked him again and he repeated himself. It wasn't for a few seconds we realized he didn't know what Wi-Fi was and thought it was some sort of free promotional item. Maybe not necessarily dumb on his part but it was really funny and turned into an inside joke at the store. My dad was a park ranger, RIP Pops. He had many hilarious stories. The best was when he was just starting out at the Grand Canyon. He hadn't learned the finer points of customer service nor the depths of people's stupidity yet. A visitor made a comment on a ranger led to of the rim that the Grand Canyon must have made a tremendous noise when it popped open dad said, yeah, imagine the noise it'll make when it slams shut the visitor was not amused. Worked at Best Buy and the two dumbest ones are these. Dude, where are your heavy duty TVs at? Me. Is it going in a business? Thinking he means it'll be on at all times? Like at a bar. Dude, no it's going in my living room. Me. What are you planning to use this for? Dude, for watching. What else? Me. Sorry, I'm just confused why it needs to be heavy duty then. Dude, well I dunno. You tell me. You all are the ones advertising these HD TVs. Second one. Dude, these are LED TVs? Me. Yep. Dude, they run on electricity? Me. As opposed to. Dude, I dunno. Me. Yes sir. They still need electricity. You have been visited by the wisdom papa type study well papa or you will fail your next text at school. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check out another video. Or don't. Either way, have a great day you magnificent people.